I didn't even know this type of compression existed, and when I first tried to understand it a few months ago, I completely gave up. But this DW Fern VT7 I saw in Bob, Hearn, Bob Horn's studio, and DW Fern, their gear kept popping up. And then Calum from Mixwave sent me their official emulation built with the Fern team, and I finally had the excuse to figure out what this special kind of a compression was. And pushing myself to understand it, what I found is a compression style almost nobody talks about, and that is pulse width modulation. It is simply one of the cleanest, fastest, and most musical forms of compression you'll ever use in mastering. In this video, I'm gonna break down exactly what PWM, or pulse width modulation compression, actually is, why this VT7 is special, and the exact settings I'm gonna explore when using this in masters. Now, pulse width modulation, I'm gonna to refer to as PWM for the sake of this video. PWM utilizes high frequency pulse signals to control the amplitude power of a signal. A PWM control signal is split into discrete parts. Either it pulses on or it pulses off. The longer the on values of the pulse wave compared to the off values, the greater the average voltage will be made available to a signal path. The less, the lower. These are defined as duty cycles. So. At 100%, the PWN, the width of that modulation, is always on, because it's 100% on, allowing all signal to pass through. At a duty cycle of 50%, half the average voltage is allowed to pass through. So, in a compressor, the gain reduction circuit is controlled by the PWM duty cycles as the signal exceeds the threshold, these duty cycles become shorter and shorter. And what that will do is that will bring down the average voltage of the signal, creating a compression style circuit. So here's the unit and here's some interesting little things I found to get started with. Now, something I found is that if you use the input and output, here on the sides, okay, you actually get pretty good clean gain. However, if I bring this output down, it's when you start using the gain knob here that you actually start to get a bit of non-linearities in its response. Now, the thing is, I'm looking at a linear analysis plot, which isn't necessarily the most accurate way to look at one of these tools um, because it's actually plotting, if we go to a Hammerstein graph, a whole bunch of harmonics. And these harmonics aren't necessarily being read in the linear analysis, which is just an impulse as opposed to a sweep. But what is interesting when I'm using this, and I'm gonna pull this up in a session, is that I've got a couple of settings I run with. One is where I use the input and output and run with the thresholds here, neutral as in like just normal compression, but use the inputs and outputs to gain stage and I get a much cleaner sort of sound, as opposed to in a second setting where instead of using the input and output to gain stage, I actually use this gain knob and I get a lot more color and breadth out of it and fatness out of it. Then you've got this here, this harder, softer, which acts as almost like a ratio, quote unquote, for this, but it's not necessarily a ratio per se because it's actually interacting with the entire transfer curve and the attack and release times. See, when you actually bring this to a harder quote unquote ratio, the attack time slows down. But when you bring it to a softer one, the attack time speeds up, um, which is really interesting. And you can even see this in the tail. The tail slows down on harder and speeds up on on softer, which is really interesting. And I've got a setting there that I've dialed in to get a lot of snap and punch um, leveraging this harder, softer value. So now what I've got is the DW phone. We're gonna actually hear this in action, but we're gonna hear it with three different flavors. We've got the raw mix at the top. We've got the, what I would call the neutral glue, where instead of using the gain, um, out here to lift up and compensate for the signal. I'm actually using the input and the output to gain stage in and out of the DW Fern. Then I've got the big fat Panorama Master where I'm not using the input and the output gain. I'm using the gain here. So I'm getting more of that thickness and tone from the unit. And then the final one is where I'm leveraging the harder 
um, instead of having it right up down the center, I'm using the harder instead of the 50%. So that way I get a slower attack and then I'm using the slowest attack and I'm calling this the, the snap setting where I'm getting more snap out of it. They've all been level matched to one another. They've relatively got the same amount of glue on them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swap back between the raw and the neutral, the raw, and the fat, the raw, and the let it snap, so we can actually have a listen to this unit. And then I'm going to make some observations and, and show you some really interesting things about it. I just want to love my body. Won't you let me love my body? I want you to love my body. Won't you come and love my body? No, I'm not the thickest, but I call me love. Nothing keeps for you to catch a green as good as resistant. Catch a grip, catch a grip, quit a resistant. Catch a grip, catch a grip, quit a resistant. Catch a grip, catch a grip, quit a resistant. Catch a grip, catch a grip. So we've got some pretty interesting compression flavors happening. Now I've dialed these in to a tasteful amount that I would use on any master. I haven't exacerbated the effect of this, but something that is so cool and interesting, and I'll show you with this gain knob here on the fat and juicy one, that when I was dialing these in, it didn't matter where I placed the threshold, the attack, the release, or the gain, even though it could sound a little bit too fast, or too slow, or too driven with the game. It always sounded musical, so it was never like it was stomping on any feet. Take a listen to this. I'm gonna play with the threshold and the gain here, and you'll get a feel for how it imparts the tone, but doesn't destroy the overall sound. I just wanna love my body. Won't you let me love my body? I want you to love my body. Won't you come and love my body? So you heard how that sounded, that, that, that drive in the game, how it just thickened everything up. And this whole exploration of this DW Fern has taught me two things. Number one, it's forced me to understand how PWM compression works and why it's so unique in opposition to things like optical compressors or FET compressors or VCA compressors. It's a very unique circuit type to be modulating the width of pulses, um, which is feeding the amplitude of the game reduction circuit and controlling how much signal's passing through. It's really unique. It's very unique. Um, so that was a great learning experience. And the second thing is I don't have any compressor analog emulation, sorry, in my DAW where I haven't felt like it hits a ceiling, like where you start driving it or manipulating it so far that it loses its analog flavor and starts to go into like digital bandwidth where you can actually hear it being digital, quote unquote. This feels limitless. It feels honestly like I'm manipulating an analog unit, but in the box. And I'm not sure if that's because they've done some magic or it's just the nature of this style of compressor that is so musical and pleasant to listen to um, that it's sort of achieved that just inherent in the design. It's not something special they've done or coded. It's just the fact that this is a really well-designed unit and that when they emulate it across to the digital world, it carries those qualities along with it. So there you have it, the DW Fern, and more importantly, pulse with, with, with modulation, which I struggled to learn about, and I finally sort of got my head around it to share with you guys and sort of wow myself a little bit about like, wow, that's how that works. Um, if you enjoyed this, I know you're really going to enjoy this super geeky deep dive into True Peak Limiting. Absolutely like 
bonkers when I had the time to like print out pages and pages and pages of stuff and go through it. Um, a little bit more limited and strapped for time these days, but I took the time out for this because this was super interesting. So check out that other video here. And until next time, take care.